What is up, programmers and coders? Today I'm going over a combination sum. In my opinion, it's been the hardest prob leak code problem I've done to date. So I'm gonna try and show you guys the best way to do this. Um, it was a new concept to me, backtracing. I posted this in my leak code channel and we had some good discussions. The guys in there actually helped me a lot. There's a lot of experienced guys in that channel. So let's get right to it. The description reads, given a set of candidate numbers, without duplicates, so that's an important point right there, and a target number, find all unique combinations in candidates where the candidate numbers sums to target. The same repeated number may be chosen from candidates unlimited number of times. So that's really important as well. Um, that just means you can use any of these numbers an infinite amount of times, so see how they use the same number too. Um, so that's gonna be important. Um, all numbers will be positive integers, and the solution set may not contain duplicate combinations. So, um, <clears throat> as you can see here, they use two, four times. So we just have to check for all the combinations of two and the rest of the indexes. So it's like, it's going to be a lot of um, calculations. So for here, the, the way it's going to work is that there's going to be a stack. So this is going to be the stack. And we're going to start off. We're gonna add two, and we're gonna add two again. It's gonna be, we're gonna be recursively calling it. And we're gonna add two again. And it's gonna be while um, candidates of i, this is, this is our pseudocode basically, is less than or equal to target, and our target's seven. So um, the next, we're still working on two. It's gonna try and add two, but it's, um, not less than i because we're constantly updating target by target minus candidates of i and that's what we're going to pass into our recursive function call and then so after that it's going to kick out of our main for loop and it's going to try and add three six and seven all separately but they're all um, Oh, I think I did candidates of I is this. Yeah, they're all not gonna work because this statement is not true. Whoops, I just erased that. This statement will not hold true for any of these. They're all bigger than the target because the target's gonna be um, one in this case, in this stack. So finally, we're gonna pop off. Um, so we're gonna call this, we'll, we'll just call it stack. Stack, and then we're just gonna pop off um, the number. So new integer. candidates of i so we're going to pop off the two and then it's going to increment our index so i is going to be one it's going to add three this time around so three is going to go on and now our target is seven so we're going to add that to um our list of lists so this is we have to return a list of lists that's how this is going to work uh, i pulled this up so backtracing is basically what how we're checking all the numbers we have to check literally every solution because we're using the infinite numbers and when and we it's just removing solutions that fail to satisfy the constraints so let's jump into the code um so we have our i have to code a um get this a function, a separate function to calculate all the sums. So let's have our base case. I'm gonna code the main function first. So if candidates equals null, we return null. And then let's just create our list of lists that we have to return. And it's gonna be integers. Uh, let's call it result new array list. And then we're just going to call um, the function that I'm going to create below. And it's we're going to pass in the candidates array, an index of zero, the target. Um, I believe it's a new array list, which is going to be our single. It's going to be our single, a single list that we're calculating each time for the target 
and then we're going to pass in um, result so that's our 2d list and then lastly we just have to return result which is our 2d list and now let's write our function that we just called so it's going to be the array of candidates and this is the index the target um, is it array list list sorry guys I have my notes here uh, current and then list of lists of integer and result okay and now we're going to so we're, we have to check we right off the bat we want to check if the target is equal to zero and if that's the case we're going to add um, we're going to add current to result so it's result uh, add um, new array list I believe and current and then we just return out of the function and here's our main for loop so we're gonna set i equal to the index because we want to update the index each time we recursively call it and we're gonna loop through the candidates dot length we have to loop through it for every possible number um, and I plus plus and then this is just like our pseudo code so if uh, candidates of I is less than or equal to target targets gonna be updated with each recursive call the candidates of I is less than the target then that means we can add it to current so current dot add candidates by and then next we're just going to recursive we call it just candidates um, passing an I this time because we want it to update and then targets gonna be target minus because we have to update the target so we're subtracting the candidates the number from the target to keep the target up to date And current oops, and result. And then lastly, we want to, we have to also kick these numbers out as I showed you. Let me see. So yeah, we, this is not, I meant to open like this. This is, we have to kick this out. So we're going to use the, this used to be a two. And we have to kick it out when we, when it breaks out of the uh, or when it breaks out of the recursive call and it returns right here it returns after the function call that's how stacks work I hope you guys know how stacks work so current dot remove and we don't want to just remove the index um, or I mean if we just pass candidates of I it's telling us to remove the index but we want to remove the actual um, number so um, if we do new integer candidates of i, that's telling it to remove the three in the current list. So that's going to kick out um, kick out the number three, and that should be it. I'm gonna go trace through it with the debugger with you guys. I pay for premium and I have to say the debugger is awesome because it shows you all the local variables so you know exactly what's going on and I can show you guys how this works. So we get to the for loop and the target's still seven. There's nothing in current, so there's nothing in our 1D list and it's going to add, so we're at the zeroth index, it's gonna add two and it's gonna keep adding, it recursively calls without updating or without increasing the index. So it's gonna keep calling to until it actually, until we update the index. And the only way it updates the index is if 
the candidates of I is less than or greater than the target, I mean, so it doesn't execute this statement, this if loop. Uh, so it's going to keep adding it. It's going to try and add it. Well, it's going to add it three times. It's going to try a fourth, but it's going to increase the index. It's not going to add to the fourth time. So there we have two, three times in it. And now two is greater than the target, which is, um, it's going to be one in a second. Yeah, there we go. And so now it can't add two. And now it's going to increase the index. So index is now one. And three is still greater than the target. So it's going to creep, go th loop through candidates that length until it kicks out the one of the twos. It's going to call this function right here, current.remove. And now the two's gone. And now we're back at um, index is zero, but it's going to increment right now because we exited this if statement. So it's incrementing i. Now we're at three, so three will work. It's going to add and we're going to call, so it's going to add it to current, and we're going to call the function again, and it's going to see that the target equals zero and add it to our result. And and it's going to return and remove the three. And now it's going to try with um, six and seven, and neither of those are going to work. So then it's going to kick out the next two eventually. And now the next two is out. And then it's going to try with three, six, and seven. It's just going to keep going like this on and on. And I could go with, through this whole thing. But I think you guys should get it at that point. Highly recommend Leak Code Premium and the debugger. Um, helps you so much to like visualize it and debug your code. That's just like so important, I think. And yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm actually not sure about the running time complexity. I guess it would be O of n in this base complexity would be o of 2n i'm not really sure i actually didn't do my research before this so um but yeah thanks for watching guys i hope the explanation made sense i'll see you guys in the next video